bien piqué. Spicy, ni enragé. Crazy, ni tellement goût. Tasty sauce. Tasty sauce. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to The Sauce. I am your host, Chef Jude Pierre. Today, we are making a crowd favorite, okay? It is called Lumbi. Um, for you for you who don't know what Lumbi is, Lumbi is stewed conch. Conch comes from the Caribbean. Um, there is an American conch. I know that like, I live in Georgia now, and you can find conch in Savannah, but it's not the same um, conch that we get in the Caribbean. Now, um, coming from a Haitian background, you could not have a party growing up and not have conch being served there. My mother always said if somebody didn't have conch at their party that it was a cheap party. So today I'm going to show you how to make conch. Conch intimidates a lot of people now. A lot of people are afraid to make lum because they think it's so hard. It's really not that hard. Once you get it down packed and, and you actually follow the instructions of it, it's really not that bad. So today I'm going to show you all the secrets that my mother showed me growing up and also the little twist that I added to it myself. So stay tuned and we're going to learn how to make conch today. Lum bee. Now I'm going to show you guys how to clean your lum bee. Clean and cut. Well, actually, I'm going to first show you how to cut it. Now, the way I was taught to cut it is you cut it down the middle part right here, long ways. So you're splitting the lumbi down the middle in two. Because the lumbi is very tough, so if you just chop it up whole like that, it's going to be very hard for it to like cook evenly. So you chop it down the middle, and then you just cut it into whatever sizes you like. I've seen people chop up lumbi that looks like like little dog food. I don't like it when it's cut too small. So I cut it in in nice portions, little bite-sized portions, but it doesn't have to be like tiny, tiny. So you just chop it up. Nothing fancy. And into the bowl. And then um, if you get into, if you find pieces that are, I don't see pieces that are too big, but I'll show you. Pieces that are really big or pieces that are too tough, you can just run the knife along the side of it like that and score it. That way it also makes it easier to cook. Some people pound their lumbi with a, with a mallet. I don't like doing that because it changes the texture of it. So I don't pound my lumbi. I just make sure to cook it down real good. So that's it. That's all it is to cutting the lumbi. It's nothing, nothing fancy, nothing, nothing too serious. After I'm done cutting all this lumbi, I'm going to show you guys how to clean your lumbi. And that's very important, all right? All right, so now we're going to clean the lumbi. Um, I put it in the, I clean it in the pot that I'm actually going to boil it in. Because it's big enough for me to do so. All you need to clean your lumbi with is um, some limes and some vinegar. That's it. And, um... Never put salt on um, uncooked lumbi. You don't put the salt. You don't add salt until after it's done cooking. I was also taught by my mother never to use hot water on it either. Even when you're defrosting it, you always defrost it with cold water. I never tried to use hot water. I was just always told not to. She says uh, if you put hot water on it, it'll make it hard. I lumbi on you. So you never put hot water on the lumbi. The lummy has a, a strong scent, so it's always good to clean it well. Add a little vinegar, and take your lumbi, and just clean it. Make sure you get in there good, okay? There's nothing to it. And once you're done cleaning it, you rinse it off with some cold water. Don't mind me. I'm just sipping on um, a little sangria I made with a uh, white Haitian rum, babuku, to be exact. I put the recipe. Um, I put the recipe in the description for you guys. But um, right now, what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of tomato paste. Just a little bit of tomato paste to pop. Yeah. 
we don't see a piece. You put a little bit of a piece. Now, I taught you guys how to make this in the first video. You put some ippies in it. Now, make sure your ippies doesn't have any sort of salt or sodium in it because that will um, make your lumbi tough. So, now you just mix it all together. And I use a pressure cooker for my lumbi. Um, a lot of people don't use pressure cookers. Some people just like boil it in the regular pot. That will take forever in a day and I don't have time for that. I suggest you invest in a pressure cooker. You can get it at one of your local kitchen gadget stores or super stores for like the cheapest one I say you can get one for like $40. And then once you get into the higher end ones you're up to like 80 or 100 But they're a good investment because you can do anything in a pressure cooker. You could uh, do your goat in a pressure cooker. You can do your oxtails in a pressure cooker. Your lumbi in a pressure cooker. I don't call like there's a lot of things that take a long time, like to boil down. You can do it in a pressure cooker. So, and that's one of the reasons why I don't pound my um, conch with the mallet because the pressure cooker cooks it evenly and quickly. So you don't need to do that. You don't need to mess around with the texture. Now once you Got that evenly distributed. Get some water. And you add your water. Now, when adding your water, you don't drown your lumbi in water when you're using the pressure cooker. You add just enough. You don't even cover the lumbi. You just add just enough so that it's almost at the top, but you're not covering the lumbi. Because once you drown the lumbi in water, you're going to lose all the flavor once it boils. And then the lumbi is not going to catch a good color either. It's going to be an a off-white color. Nobody wants an off-white lumbi. So that's pretty much it right there to season your lumbi. You just put your, your top on. And then uh, you put it on your, on your fire. Or on your burner. Now, when you're first starting out, I like to start it out on high. Start it out on high, and then um, after about 30 minutes of it being on high, the pressure cooker will start to make a sound. Once it starts to make that like a hissing sound, I'll show you guys what to do. Then. All right, so at this point, you lower your burner onto half. Like mine goes to five, five is half. And you just let that cook for about... 30, 30 more minutes, 30 to 45 more minutes. And um, that's about it, just let it cook down. And um, what's going on right now is um, the pressure cooker has built enough pressure in there and um, the steam release valve is releasing enough pressure so that it doesn't explode. And that's what all the, the steam coming out and, and the hissing sound is. So that's basically, it's gonna cook itself right now and you just wait another 30 to 45 minutes, all right? All right, so the lumbi is all done boiling the pressure cooker. Right now I'm just adding a little bit of olive oil. And then I'm going to add my lumbi into it. When you're done adding all your lumbi, you're going to have a, a decent amount of broth in there that goes in with the lumbi. As you can see, it's not in there dry. So you're going to kind of let it, kind of let it cook down in that broth for, for a little bit. But as soon as you put the lumbi into the, the pot with the hot oil, you add your salt right then and there. My mother always told me that if you let your lumbi cook afterwards and you put salt in it, the lumbi won't actually absorb the salt. So you need to add the salt in right away. A little bit of adobo. I 
at this point you can have your flame or your burner on high all right all right after about five minutes of letting it come to a boil in the stock and in the oil you are going to add a little bit of fresh What is this? Fresh sour oranges. Fresh or sour orange juice. I like acidity in my food. And it helps bring out the flavor. And sour oranges have an amazing flavor to it. So you add a little bit of that into it. And it also gives off um, a really good color when you add it to your sauce. One packet of Saison. Some tomato paste. I really wish you guys could smell this kitchen right now. It's serious. It's real serious in here right now. So now this is what is called um, making it get color, I guess. You know, loosely translated in Creole. We call this that felon bien en couleur. This is browning it, yes, this is what you guys, this is what you English speaking people will call browning. I, I tell you guys all the time, English, although I was born here, it's not my first language. Bear with me, please. The aroma is crazy right now. So when you're browning it, you're almost trying to burn it, but not burn it. So as you see, the liquid reducing in there, you add just a little bit more. Not a lot, but just enough so that it won't burn. And you do this for about seven more minutes. You literally have to babysit it. I'm telling you right now, if you want to cook Haitian food, real authentic Haitian food, you need to have some time because it's time consuming. So you want it done right. There are a few shortcuts for certain dishes, and I'm gonna teach you that as well. But for Lumby, nah, there's no shortcut. You gotta take your time. I'm also gonna add in two scotch bonnet peppers, because if you don't have heat in Lumby, it's like a waste of time. You need the heat. is also an aphrodisiac for you who don't know. So, uh, I hope you got a blue thing or somebody you can call out to eat this because you don't be feeling some type of way. You hear me? All right, now after about seven to 10 minutes of you browning the lumbi, it's now time for you to add the rest of your broth that boiled with the lumbi into it. Now the scotch bonnet peppers that I put in there, I cut them open so that all the heat can get into it. If you yourself, you cannot tolerate the heat, you can just put the scotch bonnet pepper in there whole so that you get the flavor from the skin, but not the end. Because the heat is in the seeds, it's inside of the scotch bonnet. So if you just want the flavor, but not necessarily the heat, you can just put that in there whole. But I'm looking for the heat. That's where the flavor's at for me. All right. You don't want to put too much broth in there because you don't want your lumbi soupy. So for me, for me to gauge it, it's when the broth is right about here. You still see the lumbi. So it's not it's not completely covering the lumbi. All right. You're gonna put your, your burner on, on a lower number, about two or three. And you're gonna let it stew now. Now. This is when you can add your optional seafoods. Most of the time, I like to add shrimp into mine. I like to add the shrimp with the shells in it, with the shells on it, because it, it, it traps the flavor inside of it or whatever. But today, I didn't get shrimp. I got blue crab instead. So I already cleaned and boiled my blue crab. So I'm just going to add that into there now.
and you leave it on that low flame. And you cover her up. Let that stew on a low flame for about 20 more minutes. All of that, all those flavors are just going to marinate into that lump. All right, so this is about 30 minutes of letting it stew. The pepper, the pepper's all up and through the sauce right now. And basically you're done. Now, the final touch to your lumbi, your stewed conch, is just to throw some onions right over it. Some people like cooked onions. Some people prefer that it's raw, but Haitians we normally just put it right over it, kind of like a garnish. And that's it. That's your lumbi right there. I just want to thank you all for joining me in my kitchen today. Um, today we made lumbi, aka stewed conch, and I just want to throw a disclaimer out there: whatever children are um, procreated. Off of this recipe, I am not responsible for them. <laughs> Please remember, this is an aphrodisiac. It's going to, uh, it's gonna make you a little hot. It's gonna make you feel a little. It's gonna make you feel some type of way. So enjoy this recipe and um, make sure when you do um, try this recipe, if you have an Instagram, go on Instagram and tag um, your recipe, um, Chef Jude Pierre. Also follow me on Instagram um, at Chef Jude Pierre and make sure to like and subscribe this video. Um, I'm just glad that I had a chance to share my recipe with you guys because this is this is my favorite meal ever when it comes to Haitian food. Um, I can remember eating this as a kid, but I remember like having to sneak it because like the Haitian parents wouldn't want you to eat it because it says you're a kid and you know it's an aphrodisiac. They'd be like, "Oh, lo finoje sa ki sao bal fe." Like when you're done eating it, what are you gonna do? Who are you gonna do? It's a little nasty. But anyway, enjoy the recipe. Here's the final product right here. Creole lumbi man, just with. With some with some blue crab in it, it's real good. Enjoy it. Like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about this page, man. Tell them to come here and come check out Chef Jude Pierre because I got recipes for days, and I'm gonna keep you guys very current and all the hot new stuff going on with food. All the you know, all the new recipes coming out. All the fusion recipes, you know, because it's not only about just cooking Haitian food, and it's not only about cooking only Haitian food that we were raised on, you know, a lot of us are looking for healthier options these days, so I'm gonna teach you how to do certain things, but healthier, all right? So, th once again, thank you for joining me, and enjoy, later.